Is this image real or not? Who knows? It's probably photoshopped. Please keep in mind that, you know, many parts of Half-Life and the Half-Life storyline and universe will be probably spoiled in this video, so if you want to go into the game or, you know, just community blind, I'd suggest playing the games before watching this video, but if you know, if you don't plan on ever playing Half-Life, then continue on, because honestly this game is great, so yeah, here we go. But that image does bring a sense of sadness. Not because everyone knows Gabe and Can't Count to 3, but because it shows a time of Valve when making games that weren't the norm and were ahead of their time, when they made innovative works of art and gaming that are timeless to still play. But now, they have forgotten many of their unfinished sequels the fans that have played them years ago are still waiting for, and slowly but steadily, some are moving on. But others have remained hopeful. One of the best examples of these games that Valve had left to the dust is Half-Life. It's what made Valve get famous and their great reputation in the first place. Half-Life is considered to be one of the best games ever made and one of the most influential first-person shooter games ever. Which, by the way, not many games are put that high on a pedestal like that because the first-person shooter genre has existed for so long and so many great and disappointing games have come their way during that time. But, what made Half-Life special? How did this game, released 22 years ago, manage to become such a monolith of game design and great gameplay? I can't really answer that question, but the reviewers can. Half-Life had over 50 Game of the Year awards, which is one of the most amount of awards like that for a game, by the way. Half-Life 2 ranked number 12 of that list, only being beaten by many other story-driven games and RPGs that are equally as good as Half-Life. So, with all the praise from game critics and fans alike, why was it left to the dust by Valve? Well, it's unclear. Half-Life 3, or Half-Life Episode 3, was set to release 12 years ago, in December of 2007. That is just insane, and nobody still knows why, why it was never released. Back then, the hype for it wasn't as much as it was years later. Half-Life was just simply abandoned. But for the fans, they weren't done with it yet. If Half-Life 3 wasn't going to come out anytime soon, they would make sure their voice for Half-Life being forgotten and dead would not stand by the fans. Which is why leaks, rumors, and many examples of fans making content for the older games were still going on. Half-Life has remained alive by its fans, are keeping it alive and well for many years. While Valve moved on, Valve was making new games that weren't sequels, except for Counter-Strike, and hardware that was only trying to keep up with the modern era of gaming. It's a known fact that the original Half-Life doesn't hold too well in modern gaming. The graphics look like doo-doo and the AI is pretty stupid. And the sound wasn't the greatest, but at its time, it was the greatest possible thing to play. While the game was still good, it isn't holding up too well. But the newer Half-Life games, they still do. They still have something some video games don't have these days. No cutscenes. Now, actually, technically Half-Life does have cutscenes in the newer games, but they aren't parts of the game's story where you can just let go of your sweaty controller or keyboard and mouse and just watch it happen. They want you to still mess around with the environment while still listening to Dr. Kleiner ramble on about Lamar missing. Last Half-Life had done so many things many game companies weren't doing at the time. Many would simply make a game. If it got success, just make sequels of the game with not that much effort put into them, and still get success anyway. Valve was the example of quality over quantity. They make success because they want to give gamers a sense of exploration and, well, just the goosebumps. Half-Life wanted to have very distinct differences in their story and environment. Half-Life 1 shows the destruction and chaos of the Black Mesa Complex. Dead bodies of aliens, humans, and crashed helicopters everywhere. You are just trying to survive in Half-Life 1. You are trying to avoid the Marine Corps and aliens. 
You only have so much time and effort to get out before something might happen. Half-Life 2 is an example of, of a fallen and former society, one that has been taken over. The playground sequence at the beginning of Half-Life 2, where you stroll the city, if you push a swing or swing the wheel, you can hear children laughing and playing. A true horror of what used to be here. Kids that were happy and then taken away when the horrors of the Combine arrived. These guys are ruthless, don't have any mercy, and barely any past of their former selves. All they do is obey orders and take targets out. They don't feel what they used to feel, they just want to destroy you. Which is why the fans love this series. The characters, story, and gameplay are something truly special. There are many forms of the Half-Life community. Some groups make mods and make the game have a different story or just completely screw everything up and make everything a clustered fuck. Others speedrun the game, trying to see how fast you can possibly beat the game that is humanly possible. These communities are very different and yet all come together to make one giant community because they all love the same game and same version. Many fan games, mods, and merch items have been created because of their dedication and love to this art and game. This game has had so much of an impact on these people. It had made an impact to the gaming community as a whole and many ignored that fact, which is why these groups do what they do best. Because Half-Life changed gaming and first-person shooters as a whole. This game is timeless no matter how you play or experience it. Many people will make theories about the storyline because some questions aren't answered because Valve never finished Half-Life. What is the true power of the Combine? Who is the G-Man? I know Game Theory already answered this, but I mean it's a theory, not an answer. What will happen once Gordon takes down the Combine? We know this because Mark Layla, former writer of the Half-Life series, made a letter to fans addressing the Half-Life storyline in a vague way as kind of an insult to Valve. Does Alex love Gordon? Is Dr. Breen a villain or a hero? These are interesting thoughts and questions brought up by the community. While they are debated over and over, it still brings them together because they all try and find the same answer and purpose. The true connection of Half-Life's storyline. The community have made so much content to expand your enjoyment of Half-Life because they want everyone to experience Half-Life. Something that, although is old, is gold. It's something that seems crappy at first, but playing it reels you in. You realize that something special lies deep in this game. You feel something that no other game gives you in the best amounts. Excitement, fear, and horror. The moment you get your first gun, trying to kill all those CP cops. The moment you get the gravity gun, being able to use it to your advantage when killing the Combine soldiers. Entering Nova Prospect for the first time, seeing the horrors that lie in. Then, the final and one of the best moments of the game, the Citadel. You have no weapons but the gravity gun, and yet, if anything, you don't need weapons. This thing guides you to Dr. Breen, where everything unfolds. But before you get to Breen and enter the chamber ride, you can hear sounds. Scary sounds that sound like something in a horror game. Half-Life 2 isn't a horror game, and yet, it's one of the scariest parts about it. So, with all this in mind, why did the community not move on, but Valve did? Well, Valve changed. That's kind of the simple explanation. Mainly because Steam exists. When they created Steam, at first it was the main platform for Valve's games, but it let everyone make their own to submit it to Steam to make a name for themselves. Steam became one of the top websites and apps to download and buy games from. Valve gets 30% of each sale from Steam. That sounds like very little, but on average, they make almost a billion dollars from Steam each year. So, that is just, well, a good reason for Valve to stop making games. They just make more money from Steam anyway, so what's the point? This was Valve's turning point. They went from a great studio that you would know will always surpass your expectations to a dormant company funding Steam to make more money from it. Many, although hate Valve for doing this, you can't really blame them for both taking a break and taking this opportunity. Valve had been making extremely great games for years. Although it made their reputation great, well, it was getting hard to make those great games and making sure everyone is happy about the end result of a project. Making a good game is a very hard thing to accomplish, and... Valve was creating games that influenced the entire gaming scene as a whole. So, Valve went dark for years, only releasing small things nobody really cared or wanted. Such as Artifact. Well, disaster that was. Still a thing, I guess. And some small VR projects to test their Valve Index VR set out. The fans were still waiting. 
Others had moved on, and just thought that they would never return to Half-Life or make Half-Life 3. Well, you know, they might be right. Honestly, Valve doesn't need to make games anymore since Steam is one of the best platforms to get games from, so why would they need to make another Half-Life game? This is where the fun begins. Oh my- oh my god, it, it's real. They're making another Half-Life game. How is this even possible? Well, like always, it's hard to explain. Valve decided to release Half-Life Alex to see what the community would think. Would everyone freak out, or would everyone brush it to the side? Well, as you all know, everyone freaked out, and made a hype train for it. Valve expected the announcement to be ignored by literally everyone. They would have probably not finished or made the game if they didn't get well, you know, receded hype. But, it did. Now everyone is waiting for Half-Life Alex to come out. A cost that will set you back a thousand dollars if you buy the Valve Index. Wait, what? Gay